Yes, Lord. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day you give us to glorify you and lift you up and praise you for who you are and what you're about to do and all the things that you have done. And Lord, I thank you for being the one that we can go to each and every day and know we, we're going to receive the truth and we're going to receive the guidance and we're going to receive everything we need. And Lord, all we got to do is just praise you. All we got to do is lift you up. All we got to do is believe in you and know that you're real. And I thank you for giving that knowledge to us. And I pray that we can share it with others in our actions and not just our words, Lord. But show people that we believe in you and know that you're real. Through our actions, especially our actions. In Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. Mm -hmm. This morning my passage comes out of Luke. Oh Luke. Chalked at verse 20 of chapter 6 of Luke. And I know last, I think it was last Sunday I got my verse and my chapter mixed up. And I'm trying to go right. My wife brought it to my attention. I didn't even know what I did. But I did. And, and I'm going to try to be more alert on what my preaching. But anyhow, here we go. Luke chapter 6, verse 20. And he, talking about Jesus, lift up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice you in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. And woe unto you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for you shall hunger. And woe unto you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. But I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despise fully use you. And to him that smiteth thee on the cheek, offer the other one. And him that taketh away the cloak, forbid not to take the coat also. And I could go on and on. And you read the rest of this today. If you have time, I'm going to skim over it. Because it's quite a long passage. But what I've read so far to you this morning, and to myself, it about sums up everything that we need to do and, 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 and what we need to hear. And I can sit right down right now, and the Word of God is out to you by just these few verses. But I want to read this one more here, verse 25. But love your enemies and do good, and lend, and hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and you shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. As usual, I prayed for a sermon yesterday and through the night he woke me up a few times and I got up this morning with a sermon on my mind that he laid on my heart yesterday. Well, I go in the bedroom to get dressed. He said, I want you to do that. I want you to preach the one that I have. Excuse me just a minute, I got to turn this heater around. Okay. He 
He want, he said, Arvin, I want you to preach this sermon. I said, I haven't prepared for it. He said, that's when I want you to preach is when you're not prepared. I want you to preach my word and not yours. I want you to lay it out on the line as I see fit for you to do it. And I thought for a minute, and I said, that's right. What about that verse that says, only through him I have strength? And you know, if we listen to him, he will explain each and everything to detail. If we would just listen, instead of running, instead of saying, I can't do it, instead of saying, Oh my God, how am I going to preach on all this when I do the same thing each and every day? How am I going to tell others? He said, first tell yourself and get yourself right and then tell others. Like the old saying is, we may be the only Bible that anyone ever read today or ever will read. We have to show our kids, show our family Show the people, even up the wall, everywhere we go. Don't tell them about Christ. Live it. Show them by your actions. Show them through your kindness. As this passage says, uh, it says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed out. When we read this verse, we think of money. All, I mean, just as soon as I read it, I thought of money. I don't know about you. But we need to give our knowledge in Christ to other people. That's what he's saying. That's what he's wanting us to do. Give our knowledge to the people in our surrounding area. Amen. I don't care who you meet today. I don't care who you talk today. Talk to today. Don't walk in and shove it down their throat. And don't, especially don't tell them how wrong they're doing or what they said yesterday and how it hurt your feelings today. Tell them about Christ through your actions, not through your words. Come on now. I can stand up here and preach all day long. But tomorrow you see me up there at the liquor store, what you going to say? What's he doing in there? Or going to the gambling boat. That's the preacher going into that gambling boat. And automatically you're going to have some ill feelings, right? Even though I might be just going in there to eat. I might be just going in there to see somebody. I might be just going in there to do this, to do that. You don't have a clue. And that's when we need to turn around and stop right then and sweep around our own doorsteps before we tell other people about the dirt around theirs. Amen. Come on now. Now this verse says, Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be filled. With the kingdom of God we shall be filled. With the spirit of the Lord we shall be filled. And we will hunger no more. Because once you invite Christ into your life, you will be fed physically, mentally, and spiritually. And then we can feed others. Then we can show others. And then we can tell people how good Christ is in our lives. Come on now. By the actions that we use each and every day. Showing people. So many things come on my mind yesterday. I, I, I loaded up Facebook with it. I mean, every time something comes in my mind, I put it on Facebook. But I didn't do it, people. I was listening to the Lord, and everything was truth. Everything was truth. And I know sometimes people get tired of reading stuff over and over and over that I put on there. But if the Lord tells me to do it, I'm going to do it. Whether it's on Facebook, whether it's at the church house, whether it's out there in the yard, whether it's at Walmart, I'm going to say something to people about Jesus Christ through my actions and not so many words. Amen? Through the actions. People will sit around and stare at somebody and watch every move they make and may not never listen to the words that comes out of their mouth because they don't care. They don't care. They want to see something. They want to see us. 
It's like watching a movie and only listening to the words. And that's, I guess that's just popped into my mind when Jesus said, you are blind. And it is. It's the same way as watching the TV with nothing but words on it. I'm blind. Because I don't really know what they're doing. I can hear them talking, but I don't know their sign, their line. Their, I don't know nothing what's going on on the movie other than words. So how can we as Christian folks say, I'm going to deliver the words <clears throat> each and every day without the actions? I'm going to tell you how to live, but I'm not going to show you. That don't make a whole lot of sense, does it? Amen. Blessed are you. Blessed are you when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company. So be it, people. As long as I'm in company with him, I don't care about nobody else. I don't. I love them. And I want them to be with me. But he's first and foremost. As long as I got him, what else do I need? As long as I got the love flowing from him, people will come to see me. But people will talk to me. People will have something to do with me. Because I'm kind, considerate, Christ-like, being somebody that Christ would be proud of. And then people will love me. How can I, I go against somebody And me, myself, not being Christ-like. How can I say or judge somebody and me, myself, for not being Christ-like? I like to use that, that, that sentence. Who is the Christian? Who is the Christian in this conversation? I need to ask myself each and every day, who is the Christian? Who is the one supposed to be kind, considerate, loving, hopeful, all of the above that this Bible says. Blessed are the one when men shall hate you. That's totally different from the world, ain't it? We all want somebody to just lift us up and be proud of us and just love us to death. And every stinking bit of it if it's not from God, it's fake. I don't want no fake love. Don't give me no fake love. I don't know about you, but I don't want it. I don't want it. Before I met my wife, I had several in my life that was all fake. And they showed me through their actions. My wife has stood by me over 40 years. And I've never seen a fake nothing. She's always been true blue to the point, tell me some things that I didn't want to hear, some things that I did. But I got to have that love, that security that comes from God. And she could not give it to me. There's no possible way. She was doing it, giving me the true love when she didn't even know, she didn't know how to do it. But God was making it happen in her life and showing her how through the years. And now what's happened? has finally grown into something and blossomed and we are able to get along in true love and it all come from God it all come from God and what did I do to deserve all that the Bible says in the flesh I deserve nothing but in the spirit oh yes ma'am I deserve the kingdom of God in the spirit and all I had to do was praise, praise Him, believe Him, worship Him, and get to know Him as my one and only Savior. Amen. That's all I had to do. So why do I make it so hard trying to make people like me when He's the only one that matters and He's the only one that can make people like me? And listen to me and understand me. Amen. Let's go on down a little bit further now. And when they separate you from their company and shall reapproach you, 
reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice you in that day and leap for joy. Behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. One day we're going to leap for joy, sure enough, ain't we? When he steps out on that cloud up there, well, every day, every day we should leap for joy. And knowing that he is real, and knowing he is a risen Savior, know that he's going to take care of us each and every day. By our actions, what we do, and how we do it. Come on now. How can I call myself a Christian and only speaking the words and saying what I do and what I have done and what I'm about to do? Before long, people are going to start questioning my relationship with God, right? Before long, they're going to wonder, Arvin, are you just full of words? Are you showing me something? We need to learn, we need to know, and we need to each and every day go to Him and find out what we need to do in His will. Amen. Rejoice you in that day, for you shall leap for joy. Behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers of the prophets. But you owe unto you that are rich, for you shall receive your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for you shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Praise God. The first is going to be last, and the last is going to be first. I see it every day. <coughs> Lord, why ain't I first? Why? Excuse my French, folks. Why ain't I? Why, how, come I'm not, how come I'm not rich? How come every time I see something, somebody else grabs it right in front of me and takes off with it? How come I'm always left behind? How come everybody else is running before me? How come I don't get, I don't get to the cream of the crop? They already got it. How come there's always one right, right, right apple on that tree and they get it before me? How come? How come? How come? Well, it explains it right here. <laughs> One day, we're going to receive our joy in heaven. One day, we're going to receive all the riches in heaven. One day. And the Bible says, the rich man will never enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because he's greedy. Because he's always thinking about himself. He's always wanting to prosper. He's always wanting to do something else other than follow God. And let God do it. He's our defender I can't defend myself in this world. He's the only one that can. And all I got to do is what? All I got to do is praise Him. All I got to do is worship. Come on now. Now we're going to get down here and we're going to get deep here in a minute. Hell, hang on. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm just now getting wound up, God said. Give to every, verse 30 says, give to every, same chapter. Give to every man that ask of him that taketh away thy goods, and ask them not again. And as you would that men should do to you, do you also to them likewise. Someone mistreats you, you're going to mistreat them back. Somebody lies to you, you're going to lie to them back. Someone hates you, you're going to hate them back. What if my God done that? What if Jesus Christ done that? What if he told them Roman soldiers, y'all hate me, I hate you back. It'd be, that's kind of like fifth grader, ain't it? <laughs> I hate you. I don't like you no more. You are nobody in my life. What if Jesus told me that right before he started climbing up on that cross? Where would I be now? Where would I be now? It says here, love your enemies. Well, I tell you what. 90% of the time, I make my enemies. Because I'm the one in control of everything. Come on. Physically. 
Spiritually, he's in control of everything. Mentally, he's in control of everything. But my actions, I'm in control of. Unless I receive the Holy Spirit. And then I let him be in control. But that's the only way. Blessed are you that are meek, shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's the only way. Just believe. That's right. But you got to believe. No. You got to be humble to believe. You got to be meek to believe. I can't be head strong, chest poked out, walking up to God and saying, I'm all this. I can't do that. What's he going to He's going to sit me down. He's going to say, Look at him. Sit down. Be still. Praise me. Worship me. Love me. Right? Am I right? Praise God. I know I'm right because the Bible says it. Be you therefore merciful as your Father also is. Look at him. This Bible right here says read. And I don't know about you. When it says read, I read the whole Bible. When it says read, hey now. This is deep. This is Jesus Christ talking here. This is my Savior. This is the one and only one that can help any or anything. Right here. When it says read. And what he says, we need to listen. Because he's going to be the one standing beside you and I. And right before you enter them gates, you know, when God is standing up there or sitting up there, Judge us all. Nobody's going to be standing there with you. I don't care who it is. The ones that you put before God, the ones you put behind God, the ones that, that, that you think is your Savior now, is not going to be there. And I, sometimes I get afraid. I'm not going to lie about it. I'm going to be standing one day in the presence of the living God pleading my case and begging him. Please, no. I know I've been wrong. I know I've done wrong. I know I didn't follow this book like I should have. I didn't rely on the Holy Spirit with everything. But God tells me each and every day, my son's going to be standing right there beside you saying, let, me, let him enter. Job well done. Because of why? All I did was praise him. All I did was worship him. All I did was say he is my God. That's all I did. All I did was worship. All I did was humble myself down enough to know that he is the only one that can help me. I can't help myself. Nobody else on this face this earth can help me. Nobody can help me but God. You know, it's verse 37. We got to read this this morning. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. <laughs> Don't that... It's so simple. So why do I make it so hard? Debbie and I, my wife... I get the spat and I walk around with my head nose stuck up in the air. I am better than her. She better not talk to me. She better not have nothing to do with me. I don't. Then I sit there in that chair. She prays me with my plate of food. And you know, the top of your head starts burning when something like that happens. You know what I'm talking about? And I say, Lord, how? Can she do that? How? And each and every time before she goes back in that kitchen, he says, because I told her to. And then everything gets so much brighter when I realize God told her to do that as she obeyed. Hmm. 
if that don't get you goat, I don't know what will. Well, I tell you what, it made some chills go down my back. You know, I've never seen God's face. I've never even seen his finger. I've never seen nothing. But I know he's real. And I know he's making the wind blow. And I make it, he's making everything happen in our life that is real, that is truth. And that relationship that you have with someone that you can feel there's nothing in this world that can take it away from you. There's nothing in this world can overtake it or even be better than that. A relationship that you can feel and know that He is hugging you and you can feel it. He is giving you the power and you can feel it. Almighty God. And we are able to do all these things through Him that strengthens us. And what we going to do? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. You give me strength all day long, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to live. I'm going to make and, and be a Christian on my own strength. How far is that going to get you? Not very far. Before long, people are going to see, Oh, Arvin, you ain't nothing but fake. All you do is preach a good sermon, but you don't live it, do you? You say love your enemies in the pulpit. Set in your easy chair and bash everybody. Come on now. Is anybody that I'm preaching to today or that God is preaching to today, including me, is that happening to us this morning? Blessed, he says. Blessed. That's what I want to hear. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. I can't say that enough. I want my God to say, blessed are you when Jesus Christ is standing right there beside me. Going into the heavenly places. Can you imagine the very breath of God speaking to you and I? And you can see him sitting up on his throne. The almighty God. Jesus Christ standing right there beside you. Job well done. My great and faithful servant. Somebody that I am so pleased with. That's what we're looking for. Looking for that gratification. I don't want yours. Yours don't matter. Unless God give it to you to share with me. That's the only way I want it. Amen. The love that God gives you, if you give it to me, I'll take every stinking bit of it you got. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But don't conjure it up yourself and come in here trying to... No, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear no fake. I got other things I need to have in my mind other than fake. Come on now. My Jesus Christ is not fake. He never will be. But the devil is. The devil is. But I tell you what. Well, the devil... Well, the devil has placed for us to go one day is not. It is real. Hell, fire, and brimstone is real, people. Do we want to see God face to face and wind up in hell? work all our life to see his face, to see him sitting on his throne and wind up in hell? I don't. I don't. No, no. I want Jesus Christ standing beside me saying, Arvin, you did a good job, man. And I am going to say to my father, let him in. And that's our only <laughs> avenue to get there. Just let him in. Jesus Christ, amen. I could read on and on. I might start over this next Sunday. Amen. But I tell you what, this is, this is just awesome. My dog got a little head cold over there. But anyway, uh, verse 43, the same chapter 6. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, 
neither does a corrupt tree bring forth, bring forth good fruit. What hides the fruit on your tree is what Jesus is saying here. Are your apples turning into oranges or are you, uh, is everything dying? Is everything rotten? Is everything decaying? Or is all the fruit, fruit that fell on the ground? Where are, let us ask ourselves here. How's my old fruit tree doing? Am I watering it daily? Am I, am I protecting it from the wind and the rain and the storms and the cold? And am, I, am I nurturing it so the fruit will be good and ripe and juicy for people to pick off and eat? Let's ask ourselves that today. How's my fruit doing? Am I only speaking the words or am I doing the actions? Am I saying I'm going to go water it, but I don't do it? I'm going to go take care of it, but I don't? We can talk a good long time about things and accomplish nothing. I do it every day sitting in that chair. What I'm fixing to do, how I'm going to do it, and when I'm going to do it. And a lot of times it never gets done. Are we lazy in Christ? Come on now. I'm getting ready to close. Y'all hang on. <coughs> because verse 47 says, no, verse 46 says, And why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Pray all day long. And don't do his will. When he tells you to do something, you don't do it. Or I don't do it. And he didn't tell me to do it. But I still call him Lord, Master of the Universe. The kingdom of God is at hand. Preach a good message I'm talking about. I need to be concentrating on my actions. Because you know, if I remember that saying that came to my head last night, the Lord, good Lord told me. You know, being parents to our kids, the best gift we can give them is showing them. Being Christ-like and showing them. Not just saying it. Being Christ-like, showing them. It ain't physically what you do. It's mentally, people. Spirit, no, no. I got that wrong. It's not physical, it's not mentally, it's spiritually. You can only train. I'm thinking about my little grand, grandbaby right now. I can talk all day long, she hardly ever listens. But if I go through the motions, she's watching. She's watching everything I do. And then she's going to question me. And that's where a child is. And as a child of God, we need to do the same thing, don't we? Watch and wait. Not just listen and believe, but watch and wait. The actions. I can say all day long, that wind's blowing, but I'm not going to believe it till I see it. Storm's coming. I'm not going to believe it till it gets here. Well, so many things can happen before it does. It can just go slant. Go, as many times, it just goes away. And they call it for a heavy thunderstorm coming this way. I go to bed, and it never happens. I wake up the next morning, no rain. So why are we always trying to figure out what's going to happen next instead of just be still? I wait on God to deliver. And if something does happen to you, don't be afraid. Don't. God is at hand. We got a kingdom of heaven we're going to. I don't know about you, but I, I'm almost 70 years old, and I, I tend to worry at times. Well, I may not wake up in the morning. The wife said last night, 
in so many words. We're not going to, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, Arvin. But I went to sleep in peace. Because I'm either going to wake up to that coffee pot, or I'm going to wake up to the throne room of God. It's two choices. And we're not guaranteed neither one. Are we? Yes, we are. The kingdom of God is at hand, if you believe. That's all you got to do. One more step, excuse me. I hate to go so long, but I can't I can't stop right now, I'm sorry. Verse 49. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a fountain built. I messed that all up, excuse me. But he that hear and do it not is like a man without a foundation built a house upon the earth against, against which the stream did beat and immediately it fell. And the ruin, ruin of the house, that house was great. There is nothing I say again Man has tried to build everything to withstand the storm of God. Allowing it to happen is what I'm trying to say here this morning. Nothing. I don't care what it is. It can't, it can't withstand a hurricane. It can't, it, it, it can't withstand a tornado. It can't withstand a storm, in other words. If God says fall, it's going to fall. If God says go back, it's going to go back. Why? I don't know. You're going to have to ask them when you get there. But I do know this. God allows things to happen for us to prosper in Him and to gain more knowledge in Him. So everything that's happening to you today that is bad, He can turn it into good in a bleak one eye. And he will. Because he makes us go through things in order to learn. In order to understand. And the more I fall and the more torment I'm in, that's the point I'm, man, I am praising and worshiping him. And sometimes it's not all joyful. Most of the time I'm crying. I'm frustrated. And sometimes I wonder if he still loves me. Do you still love me, God? Are you going to take care of me? Even with the storm coming, even, even with the rattling of the windows, with the thundering and the lightning and the clashing. And, the, and I'm not only saying the weather. I'm talking about the storms in your life. Are you going to take care of me? I've done all this for you. I give my life for you. He says, I got one better than that. I don't give my life for you. When I need to be saying, I'm giving my life to you. At times, but other times I didn't. Or I ain't. Or I'm not. Come on now. How in the world... Last passage, I promise. Verse 22, chapter 7, Luke. Then Jesus answered, saying unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised to the poor. The gospel is preached. Poor in spirit. Amen. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. You mean he can do all those things? And then I ask myself, have I ever seen all that? Have I seen all that happen right before my very eyes? And automatically we start questioning God. Can you really do that? Come on, let's get real here as Christian folks. Now, have you ever, 
Have you ever questioned God about are you going to do it? Or did that, did that, did that man, did that whale really swallow that man up? I mean, so many mysteries in our life. How in the world did a man that walked face this earth do all those things that that Bible says? And furthermore, how am I going to believe all that? Now, I'm going to tell you, it's a simple answer. Let's back up. Somewhere in the middle of the sermon, I see it. I feel him. I know he's real. He hugs me every day. He gives me what I need. And I have visions of what he's doing each and every day through that book, through the Holy Spirit. And I know that he's real. And I believe wholeheartedly when he touches me, which is all the time. Sometimes I don't feel it, sometimes I do. But it's all my fault. Amen. It's not his because he's always holding me. It, it, it's so, we say sometimes, God, where you're at? God, come back to me. And he says each and every time, if I turn around, I'm going to run slam over him. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He's always with you, no matter what. And blessed are you. For you shall receive the kingdom of God one day. And all we got to do is believe. All we got to do is praise Him. All we got to do is worship. Thank God for coming to the glory of the Lord. Amen.